Erythromyalgia is a condition where people get red, hot, painful feet usually. Sometimes the same thing that can happen with the hands and once in a blue moon parts of the face can be involved too, like the ears and the nose, but that's less, much less common. Um, it most commonly patients get red, hot, very painful feet and that can happen intermittently or it can be a constant problem. We're not entirely sure what exactly causes it, but we know what can set it off. Most patients will tell us that if, if their feet get hot for any reason, for example, if they've been out exercising or out in a hot environment for whatever reason, that can precipitate these episodes of the feet suddenly turning red and becoming hot and painful. In a very small proportion of patients, the, uh, the condition can be inherited. And we know from our studies that's about 5% or 1 in 20 patients presenting with this condition have a family history of it happening in other members in their family. But 19 out of 20, 95% of them, it's not, it's not an inherited condition, it just is it what we call sporadic. It happens for no apparent reason in an individual and it's not an inherited condition. Many patients with erythromyalgia will say, I go to my doctor and I tell them about these symptoms and nobody seems to recognize what the diagnosis is. And a lot of patients tell us, we looked it up on the internet ourselves and made our own diagnosis. And um, then we read the papers from Mayo Clinic and we decided to come here. And the advantage of Mayo Clinic is that we have lots of people who've seen this before and who have experience with managing it. Um, we, have form we have a formal method of investigation for this. We look at um, the photographs during the episodes. We examine the vascular status of the limbs both before and during the symptoms. And we look at the nerve status of the legs with, um, in patients with erythromyalgia. And we have se several very sophisticated tests to look at that. And so we can, tell a pa we can confirm the diagnosis. We can, dis we can discern whether there's an unusual type of neuropathy or nerve problem underlying it. The red hot feet sounds like something a little bit crazy and a little bit something that, might, that wouldn't hurt that much. But in fact, patients can be in agony from this. And one of the things that mo almost all patients will tell you that if they put their feet in cold water or ice, that can often help with the pain of this and even take away some of the redness. And that is um, something that most people do to a, a greater or larger extent. Unfortunately, sometimes they overdo it. And when you soak your feet in ice or cold for long, prolonged periods of time, it damages the skin of your feet and they end up in this vicious circle of having their feet in cold water or ice all the time and then their skin being damaged from that. So they'll even end up with manifestations of frostbite on their feet or ulcers on their feet that won't heal because of all these methods that they're using. So one of the things that we teach people to do is yes you can use for brief periods of time cold water. We prefer not ice um, and, but th we emphasize that people should not use that all the time. They, they have to get into the habit of just using them for very limited periods of time on very limited occasions each day. In the old days, we didn't really know exactly what to do, but back in the 1950s, here at Mayo Clinic, it was recognized that if people took an aspirin tablet, that would make their symptoms completely disappear, and sometimes for prolonged periods of time. And for the longest time, that was the only treatment we had. But as time went on, we realized there were more and more patients who tried aspirin, and it didn't work. And over the years, there's been many different types of treatments described, mainly in case reports, like one individual responded to this medication, another individual responded to this one, another one to this one. And it adds up to a whole collection of stories of individual patients responding to individual medications. The problem has been that when we try the same medications on other individuals, as often as not, they don't work. So what we end up doing is experimenting with different types of medications that have been reported to, be, to help and seeing which ones help in individuals. In the last few years, we've come up with a couple of topical combinations, in other words, um, formulations of skin creams that patients find helpful and also skin patches that relieve the pain. And so we're looking very much at medications that we can put on the local area of the skin where the red hot feet are occurring. So for example, putting a, a cream that'll help with the discomfort on the feet itself, rather than taking oral medications which can have so many side effects. And that's um, a lot of our efforts are, have been put towards trying to study different ones that might be helpful.
With erythromelalgia, we would love to be able to wave a magic wand and make, make the symptoms disappear completely. But we've realized from hearing patient stories over the last number of decades and with many, many hundreds of patients being seen here, that that is not a really um, realistic therapeutic aim. So what we end up having to do really is help people learn to live with their erythromelalgia, but learn how to teach them to get back to a normal life despite their symptoms. So when their feet turn red and hot, that we have creams that will settle down the pain so they don't have to be, you know, they're not disabled with that pain and getting them back to a more normal life. So I say to my patients, we have ways that we can teach you to get back to normal life even despite the fact that this is going on. And the main things that we do is find tolerable ways of controlling the pain when this occurs. And um, that's an achievable aim in our hands in, in the majority of patients. Of course, there's always a few that have very bad symptoms and we can't go that far to get them back to normal. But in many, many people, in the, in the majority of people, we can go a long way towards that aim. So we feel that we have a lot to offer patients who have erythromelalgia here at Mayo Clinic, both in terms of investigation, diagnosis, and management of this rare problem. A lot of places just don't see it or are not aware of this diagnosis, and that's why I think it's, a great, um, that it's great that we have this specialty clinic here.